What's up guys, Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Dev Pro Duel video and Ranked, and this time we're going to be playing with the Odd Eyes Draco Pelt deck. This is honestly my favorite deck in the format right now in terms of what I'm capable of playing. Um, and honestly, just the entire pendulum mechanic in general just fascinates me. I really like like this deck list. Uh, but this is a deck list that I'm testing for uh, Nationals, which is this coming weekend, which I'm going to be at. And in fact, I'm leaving for Nationals the day this video goes live, so I actually will probably be in Pittsburgh at the time this video goes up, or at least on my way there, so there's that. I haven't made a video in a while, like two or three weeks. I haven't made any videos since like a little bit before YCS Origins. I've just been busy. Um, I've just been working a lot. I've had uh, I've had a lot of things that I've been just like trying to just do, uh, ultimately. <laughs> just a lot of things. You know, life gets in the way, but hopefully I'll be able to start, you know, actually working my way back into making videos on a regular basis because uh, this is a resource that I would not like to actually lose in terms of uh, in terms of it's just an outlet, it's a hobby, it's a lot of different things, it's an income, and it's just one of those things that I actually just would prefer to keep around if at all possible. But anyway, nothing much to say about here about this deck list here. It's just a Draco Pal deck. Uh, it's like I said, what I'm testing for nationals right now with uh, Triple Kieran and Double Unicorn in the main. Just small little things like that. I've been testing things around, and this is ultimately what I've kind of come to uh, in terms of. Unless anything major changes, this is going to be more or less like 90% of what I play at Nationals. But anyway, enough of that. Let's jump into this game. Alright, so going into the game, like I said, this game is going to be played in ranked, but I am doing post-duel commentary rather than live commentary because I tried to do some live commentary and I just really wasn't feeling it. It was really, like, difficult and grinding, like, grading on me, like, as a person, just because it was like... I couldn't get the sort of quality control out of it that I wanted because people would leave these different things. It was very irritating and agitating, and this was something I tried like a week ago, and it ultimately just got to the point where I was like, you know what, hell with it, I'm not recording anymore. Uh, so I decided the post dual commentary is probably the better way for me to go, but I ended up playing against Heroes, and my opponent bricked without Shadow Mist, and that was very, very fortunate for me because if uh, he had drawn Shadow Mist, I don't think there would have been any way for me to have won the game based off the cards that he has access to, because my hand isn't that great in terms of a going second hand, especially against four back row, and at this point I have no idea what I'm playing against, so I'm absolutely just terrified of what these cards could be. I think I'm playing against a nice deck, these could all be strikes, all these different things, and so I'm looking at my hand, and it's got a lot of good quality cards in it in the form of Donkey and Sorcerer and Unicorn and, you know, Scales, so uh, drawing the Skyrise for the turn obviously just helped that as well, but ultimately I'm just like... I can play this game out and like try to play through back row, I'm just trying to do it very cautiously. And so I ultimately come to the decision of what I want to make in terms of a play, and I'm like, alright, I'll put Lizard Draw and Sorcerer in my scales, summon Donkey, search like another card, pop Lizard Draw, get a draw, and then I'll play Skyrus, pop my Sorcerer, have Unicorn and Light Phoenix, and that'd be a really cool play. But I made the mistake of not playing my Sky Iris first, I played the Lizard Draw first, like just instinctively, I was like, well, let's set the scale. And I realize this and I catch it after I play the Lizard Draw and I go to play the Sky Iris and it turns out he did have a Twin Twister which is what I would have avoided by playing Sky Iris first. Um, it wouldn't have really changed much because Sky Iris itself would have still been Twin Twistered when I was trying to resolve its effect, but it would have protected my scale thus leaving Lizard Draw there allowing me to get another draw. Um, but it ultimately didn't really actually ultimately matter that much. But I'm able to put Unicorn and Pendulum Sorcerer in my scale, Normal Summon my Donkey. Because I have scales up, I get to add another copy of Pendulum Sorcerer to my hand. And then I Pendulum Summon Lizard Draw and Sorcerer because Sorcerer being in my scale is a 2 being small enough for Lizard Draw to be summoned. And I'm honestly just expecting the summon to not go through. I'm expecting to just throw these cards into a Solemn Strike. Him only have two cards left to his name, and then I have scales, meaning that I'm in a better top decking situation than he is. I can draw any monster in my deck and summon it with a two scale and an eight scale in my scales. So even things like Kieran would have been perfectly fine to draw. But my summon doesn't get striked, and I'm just like, alright, this this is actually a lot better than I was ever hoping to be, because I get to pop my unicorn, pop my sorcerer in the scale, search Guturtle Monkey Board, get a draw off Guturtle. And then also use Monkey Board to search for Skull Crowbat Joker to just allow myself to have, you know, just a continuous flow of monsters to throw in the back row. Monsters beat back row. If you can have a monster replacing themselves over and over again, going against tangible one-offs back rows, like, you're able to win that fight eventually through time. Like, if your opponent's not pressuring you back, it's only a matter of time. So all three of my monsters run into a Quaking Mirror Force, and that's perfectly fine because of the fact that Pendulum Sorcerer can pop any cards on the board. So I can just pop face downs, that's absolutely no problem at all. 
by any stretch of the imagination. So I have a Pendulum Sorcerer in my extra deck that I popped out of my scale off the first Pendulum Sorcerer resolving. So I Pendulum that out for one, pop my face down Pendulum Sorcerer, and then pop the Monkey Board in my scale, and uh, search for a Lizard Draw and a second donkey, I believe, is what actually ended up getting searched there. Or maybe I searched second donkey off of the Skullcrabat Joker. I can't quite remember exactly. But I get to a Lizard Draw. I search Lizard Draw at some point off those because I have Turtle in my scale. So I activate Lizard Draw, get a draw off Turtle, activate the Lizard Draw's effect, you know, getting a uh, getting a draw for that. I drew Terraforming, and Archfiend Eccentric was drawn during my previous turn. So I'm able to continually just out more of his back row in this form. And so... I have a scolding that I've drawn as well. There's multiple different things I have. I have a strike that's still down from the first turn. I'm feeling very, very comfortable in my position here. I have a sky iris, which I'm able to, you know, use to continually fuel my scales because I do have unicorn and light phoenix both still in my deck, as well as odd eyes fusion. So I have three targets in my deck to search off of the sky iris. So I activate my third pendulum sorcerer, which uh, I was searched, I believe, somewhere. It was either searched off of, I think it was searched off Skullcrabat Joker. I believe that the pendulum sorcerer, the second one got second donkey and lizard draw and then skull Red joker got a uh, pendulum sorcerer if i completely like remember i can't remember <laughs> all i know is that these cards are in my hand now and they were not drawn they were searched but uh so i use skyers to pop that pendulum sorcerer search an odd eyes fusion because i'm going to be able to search for another odd eyes card next turn potentially i've got two traps scolding and strike and i just drew an ariadne as well if i didn't draw the scolding i would have put ariadne in my scale and, and like pop that to have gotten you know more value got another search for the trap but there are only two traps in my main deck left so all i can really do with this ariadne is put it in my scale and make my counter traps free which is by no stretch of the imagination a bad thing but since i have a lot of pendulum access now in the form of like four cards of my extract that are all pendulum summonable um, i decide to overlay my sorcerer and my joker into a diamond dyer and just snipe the last back row which is the mass change so he had literally a perfect four card hand to use with Shadow Mist had he drawn it first turn. That I do not believe I would have been able to win this game. And so he top decks a hero lives, pays himself down, summons Shadow Mist, attempt to activate its effect, and I just saw him strike it. And I've got a scolding backing it up as well, so the last card in his hand is absolutely dead as well. So ultimately, a little bit unfortunate for him. Like I said, there is like an 86% chance, cumulative probability, of you drawing Shadow Mist or a card that gets you to Shadow Mist going first. And that hand is very scary. The hand that he had was very scary in terms of me trying to, like, plow through a Dark Law. Like, let's think about that. That's Phantom Knight Sword, which, like we've already covered, makes it 3200. And if it would die by battle or card effect once, you can just destroy Sword instead. So Dark Law gets protected. So you have to kill Dark Law effectively twice. And then there was Quaking Mirror Force, which wipes an entire board of threats face down for Dark Law to just pick off. Uh, just a bunch of other cards. There was a Twin Twister as well to prevent, like, me from setting Strike. And, like, having to strike the Dark Law's effect that was activating to, like, banish a card out of my hand and stuff like that. If that was the route I decided to go down. Like, that was a very, very good hand. There's a Goblin Berg in there as well that ended up getting discarded off Twin Twister. That was a very, very good hand for him if he had just drawn Shadow Mist or a way to Shadow Mist. Whether it was Summoner Monk, literally any card was live because he had Mass Change as well. So that was the spell to discard off Summoner Monk. It would have been replaced by the Shadow Mist that got summoned. All of these different things. There was a... <laughs> There was way too much chance for me to lose that game, but, I mean, that's how the cookie crumbles, essentially. That's how Yu-Gi-Oh! goes. This game is very, like, luck-based at its core because you have these mathematical chances of just not drawing specific cards that might be very, very critical to your deck's engine. But anyway, that is all for this video. It was kind of short, but, I mean, these are probably the type of videos, links that I'm going to be trying to focus around where I just do one duel, comment over it, and do all that sort of nonsense. I mean, if it works out well then that will be the type of video that I go down in terms of uh, keep continual like doing, continue, continuous production. What am I trying to say? I have no idea. But anyway, if you liked this like specific style of Def Pro video, let me know in the comments down below. All this sort of nonsense, I'm curious on your feedback. Again, sorry I didn't make any videos for the past couple of weeks, but life got in the way. Had to deal with some things. All that sort of nonsense. But other than that, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Links are in the description to my Facebook pages. If you want to check those out, definitely do so. That is what they're there for. Other than that, if you want to support me, clicking ads on my videos and disabling ad block when you view my videos is the best way to support me. Helps out a lot. And if you disable your ad block, it's very, very much appreciated. If you just take a couple seconds, disable it, refresh the video, and then put it back on after you've clicked an ad or two. It definitely helps out more than I can ever express, and you would have my eternal gratitude. But other than that, that is all for this video. Again, let me know what you guys think about this type of video and the way I've done it in the comments down below. And as always, guys, take care.